Hello, hello. What's up, folks? It's been a hot minute since I have live streamed, but I'm here trying to survive wedding season because it's it's a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got a lot of stuff I need to call, so figured I'd go ahead and call some stuff. Y'all can hang out with me. I'll answer some questions while I'm calling, and if you haven't used Photo Mechanic, this will be a nice moment for you to get a little look at it and how it works or at least how I use it because you can do a lot with photo mechanic and it's super fast comparative to Lightroom as far as culling is concerned so got a couple weddings I gotta call so yeah let's go ahead and uh go ahead and jump into it I actually I can't even remember who all I need to call <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, so many weddings. Hold up. Who do I need to call first? Yeah. Heather and Michael. And since I didn't have a second, it should be fairly easy for me to call this uh, capture time yeah having a second is great and all but it definitely makes the process a lot longer as far as calling your photos and editing and stuff especially if they use a different camera system it's just it's so much sometimes I just want to go through the photos and be like, yep, this is what I did. This is how it went. There it is. There it goes. Come on, photo mechanic. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. <laughs> How's everyone else doing? How's everyone else doing in the the non wedding world? Cause I'm I'm over here hurting mainly because so I, I said I had 40 weddings this year and the majority of them are happening like at the end of the year. And it's just it's so much so much at one time. Like, this month alone is, like, super busy. Actually, yeah, I have... I have so many emails I need to send out, too. So much. Alright, so... Here I am in Photo Mechanic. I already imported all my stuff onto my computer, and I made my backups. Um, if y'all know about that, I have a whole backup process, which I made a video about. Um, you should definitely check it out, but... So I must have... On the computer backed up multiple times and now I'm just referencing the raw files and then I go through these and I five star all the photos that I'm gonna keep oops I didn't want to do that 
So after double clicking on a photo, now I can go through and five star all of them. And what I love about Photo Mechanic is I can just use the scroll wheel on my mouse to advance the photos. And then I'm just hitting five on my keyboard to select it. It makes the process pretty quick and mindless, honestly. And then I taught a class on it once before, but I have a, what I like to call a yes mentality when calling my photos. So I'm trying to find the photos that kind of make me immediately say yes. So instead of choosing photos to get rid of, what I'm doing is I'm choosing the photos I like and I want, um, which also makes calling a lot faster. Because then it's basically just like, you know, yep, that worked, yep, this worked, yep, that worked, yep, this worked. And I can just kind of scroll through quickly. Oh, this might work. Can I? Five star that. I gotta make some gifts for this wedding too, so. Finding where the gifts are can be hard. I need to come up with a better process for um, marking my gifts so it's not just like a bunch of random photos. Because that's what always happens to me is I'm like, cool, I'm going to make a GIF. And then I start going through the photos to call and I'm like, was this the start of the GIF? <laughs> it's like, I don't even know. And then I like straight up forgot. And then I'm like, ah. Then I have to guess. Or even like this, this is like a pano photo that I'm going to combine. But I have to like remember that I'm going to combine it later. It's just... I gotta find a better way to to mark that stuff. Also, one thing that's nice is that um, you saw me like flipping the photo, so that stuff will go over to the photos once I actually sync all the information over. So that means I don't have to worry about rotating any photos because I can do it while I call. just some random candidates of like friends and family.
I almost want to start calling by a lens because it's annoying how it jumps back between the close-ups and then like the wides. Maybe, maybe one of these days I'll do it. So as you can see, I like to switch between the, uh, my 35 is always my close-up shot, and then my 23 is always used for just the nice wide that I set up. And I kinda, kinda switch between the two the whole time. combined already here's a first look with dad might be able to be turned into a GIF as well, we'll have to see. So everyone's reaction. make it bigger for y'all there we go <laughs> Oh, the timing of my cameras is so off. I don't understand why. <laughs> the facial reactions. ceremony which was the worst lighting in the whole world ever known it was so annoying it was just backlit there were no clouds whatsoever it was the absolute worst but typically I'll take some detailed shots of the ceremony and then just some 
candid whatever here are the guys hanging out before the ceremony lighting wasn't the best there but it was a candid and real moment so just kind of kept it how it was So typically when everyone walks down the aisle, I do like to be kind of in the center of the aisle. Um, I like a nice symmetrical. Oh, a nice symmetrical shot when people are walking down the aisle. I don't really like shooting from like the side. This is the worst because not only is everyone like looking down, but with the sun like blasting them in the face too, it doesn't make it any easier than for them to look up and give me a smile. Yeah. Ah, the side of my face. I was hoping to get some hugs and kisses, but I didn't realize they were gonna be up on like a stage like that. So like while I got them, I wasn't able to get them ideally due to, you know, I'm not gonna step up on the stage. Like while I don't mind being in front of everyone at the wedding, um, cause you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get a good photo, but I'm not gonna stand like on the stage with everybody. That's just taking it too far. I think, yeah, this was one of those fast ceremonies where like, you're like, here it is, here it is, kiss the bride. And I'm just like, oh, okay. You gotta be ready for those too. Luckily, like I've done enough weddings at this point that I can like feel it coming on. But yeah, that stuff sometimes, they just out of the blue, like, oh yeah, kiss the bride. And you're like, dang, bruh. You're like, I just, we just started. Y'all already over here kissing. The vows were like two seconds long. And then everyone else walking back out. hugs and stuff so this is all from the 56 yo it's the guy dan 
I'm dead. <laughs> What's up, man? How are you doing? So all of these just like candid moments for the most part, except for this stuff here. It was all with the 56. Um, the 56 is a great sit back in the corner and just kind of, you know, take some shots. No one really knows you're there. And then we go into family photos. These are usually straightforward. So with family photos, I typically will do the horizontal and vertical when it's just like two to three people. But once you start getting past that, then I only do horizontal shots or landscape or whatever, whatever you want to call them. waiting on somebody so I decided to take a couple of solos of her and then yeah back to the big groups you'll see I typically take a pretty good amount of photos too not just like one or two because someone blinks having a handful of photos is always such a huge help to be able to go back there and be like oh grandma blinked on this photo but she did it on this other one so I can use that one But yeah, family stuff is usually pretty straightforward. I just try to get them as candid as possible. So every now and then I'll just let make them do something stupid or just let them, you know, do whatever they want to. So, you know, don't don't be afraid to let the family kind of just like do their own thing, too. You just got to keep an eye on them so it doesn't turn into like 50 years of like, OK, we need to take these photos. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a gift. So I'll five star the first photo. A pretty large group using my 14 on that one and just having them do dumb stuff and we get the bridesmaids I guess that was a gift dropped her they crazy <laughs> everybody wearing boots what's what funny was this wedding was in New Jersey and I'm like this is the most country wedding I've done which is crazy because I'm like down here in North Carolina then I go to New Jersey and shoot like the most country wedding I've done all year. Like I have not had any cowboy boots at all this year. And then I go to New Jersey and it's like, oh yeah, let's get country. It was nice though. But yeah, so usually 
at this point of the day, this is like Katja hour. Um, I always do family first because they're the most difficult to work with usually. The bridal party tends to be more cooperative because they just like, they kind of get it. And you know, they're like closer friends. They don't want to like ruin the person's wedding or anything. Um, so I'll have them go next up. And they just tend, they tend to be way faster. So it's easier. Yep, and then hit the groomsman. And then solo shots. So that's just each one of the guys with the groom himself. Then maybe some creative shots. I feel like I always have a hard time with the creative stuff. For the big groups like that, I feel like it, start, it starts getting pretty standard after a while. You're like, stand in a flying V. Uh, stand like you're on Vanity Fair cover or Vogue or something. To hit the dab on the quickness. Dab, dab, dab. If you don't if you don't already use photo mechanic you need to get on that you need to get on it right now it is just so so fast because basically it's just working off of the JPEG previews of your raw files so it's like loading these things like in two seconds So you can just fly through them. So this wedding, for some reason, I think these were, yeah. I shot a lot of portraits in with 14. I don't know why I was just feeling these close up 14 shots, but I actually love the way they look. So with any walking shots like this, I'm always looking for like their feet. I want like a knee bent or a leg out. And then you just gotta make sure the expression looks good. Cause it, it helps with like giving that feeling of like, oh yeah, they're walking. But also then their legs and feet don't look like weird where they're like in the middle of a step or something. And you're just like, okay, their legs are in wonky spaces. I'm half and half on veil shots. I honestly don't like them. Every now and then I'll do it, but I don't know. They never look, I feel like they never look good. They just look like whatever. from back in the day. Which is always cool. Pictures of the cocktail hour. People chilling, hanging out. Which is also a great way to test your lighting if you need to do some indoor stuff. What 
Where's my shutter at? 160, yeah. It's like, why do their legs look so blurry, but... It makes sense. I was only at 160. So these are all with the 14. I usually, I love all of this stuff. Like intros and things at like really wide angles. Also, I found that it helps because what will happen is they'll be coming in. And you won't really know where they're going to go or where they're going to stop and dance. And so... If you're shooting like with a telly all close, what ends up happening is you're like, oh yeah, I'm ready for the shot. They're going to come out. They're going to do something. And then they do it in the most random of spots. And you're like, great. So then you like can't even, you don't even, like you miss the shot because they get too close to you or something and you can't really move. So what I do, I'm on a 14 and I'm actually just following them back. You can kind of see it. I put my uh, focusing on continuous shutter. Here, we'll just, we'll leave this shot and we'll let everyone think that he actually caught it. <laughs> oh, except for the fact that she's like holding it. How fancy, what moves? But yeah, that 14 ensures that I'm always going to catch what's happening because all I have to do is back up. Not even that much, too, because yet again, it's, it's 14 mil. Like, I'm pretty close to them here, so take a couple steps back and I'm going to get everything that's happening. Look at that high five, he caught it. Look at him going in. Hey. <laughs> so here's the couple. And the first dance. Um, and if you caught my video about lighting, I just have a camera or flash on my camera. I have a Max Sphere on that. My ISO is 800, so like I said, I usually kick my ISO up a little bit to catch the ambient light of the room, which is how you're getting like all the back, like all the lights and stuff in the background. And then flash it just enough to light them up Yes, there's a little bit of grain, but I don't mind it at all. And then yet again for the first dance, I try to shoot mainly wide. I've been shooting close recently, but what always happens when I shoot close is I miss like a dip or a spin or something because you're like nice and tight like this. And then all of a sudden they start doing stuff and you're like, oh, I'm too tight now. I'm gonna cut off like their hands and stuff when they're spinning and things. So it's mad annoying. So I'll typically stick, this time I was shooting 14, but I'll stick with like a 23 or something and just stay there most of the time. It just ends up working better. Oh look, my feet, my shoes. But yeah, there's nothing like, yeah, like that, like a good, facial emotion shot, which you can only get that by shooting a close up. You can kind of get it with the 14, but it's not the same.
I feel like the 14 gives you a nice overall perspective. And then something like the 35, which is what I'm using for the close-ups, gives you a nice, decent telly shot. Man, people with their iPhones. So see like that, that little dip, because I was shooting with my 14 at the time, I didn't have to worry about missing it. It was just like, bloop, there it is. Whereas if I was tight, I may have missed it. I probably could have caught it, but it just, I found when you're tight, it's just, you're probably going to miss it because you're not going to be composed correctly for it. It's going to come out of nowhere. So they went right in his speeches. And this is yet again the same lighting setup. Just the flash on by camera, Max Fears on there. Um, biggest tip for speeches is always, always wait for the hug. They usually go up and hug each other. Always wait for it. Don't chimp. Don't like go to do something else. Don't set up for the next speech. Watch the couple and wait for the person to come by and hug them because like 90% of the time it happens. Like that. So if you're like off looking at something else or looking at your photos and being like, oh, how did they turn out? Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna miss the hug. Then I was able to get the couple out for sunset photos, which the sun set pretty quickly. I feel like one moment we were shooting and it was like, yeah, this is great. And then next thing I knew it was like mad dark. Like I didn't even realize how dark it was. Uh, I took a couple bracket shots here. Um, I might combine them, but I usually like to take a couple so that I also have like an overexposed one and an underexposed one and I don't have to sit there and be like, okay, let me underexpose some and then let me overexpose. Like I just take a quick bracket. I have it set so it shoots off like five photos um, starting from like three or four stops over. So that's what you're seeing here. So pretty much I'll like, okay, I like this exposure. I can probably save these highlights. I know where I'm at. And then I'll bracket. So the first shot's usually overblown and I'm fine with that. And then it comes down almost like, I think it's two stops or something each time. Oh yeah, you can even see it, the exposure comp. So it's, yeah, plus four. And then it goes four. 2.7, 1.3, and then minus 1, 3, minus 2, 7, minus 4. So the 4s are usually underexposed. But, you know, I have all those options now that I can use rather than just being like maybe underexposed once and overexposed once. What's happening? What did I do? My scroll wheel isn't changing the photos anymore. 
what what is happening oh no so I upgraded graphics cards which is doing awesome for the stream but I've noticed some wonkiness going on with the uh, Lightroom at times this was also bracketed by accident but that works Yeah, I shot so, so many portraits with uh, the 14 this wedding. This is the 56 again. Back to the 23. 56 for a nice big wide. Oh no, this was the 23, what am I talking about? Fields right by the ceremony area so I had them jump in there and the fun thing is they actually weren't even that far in they're like maybe like a row or two in um, but obviously if you shoot with a telly winds you blow out everything in the compression it just makes it look like they're like in the middle of a cornfield wow but they're literally like you can kind of see it here they're like right inside one of these maybe like two steps in <laughs> so they don't have to deal with um going all the way in the cornfields because they were even telling me um because this was like out in the mountains they were saying that bears come by and um and just like eat the corn which i i didn't know and you could tell where the bears have been by um yeah look at how i lost the light that was literally like the sun going down and then all of a sudden it was like oh by the way it's dark but yeah the bears would just come in and eat the corn and they would roll around in the cornfield so you could tell where they'd been because it's all like smashed down and i was like wow i don't want to get mauled by a bear today <laughs> i hope they're not here while we're uh taking photos But yeah, the one uh, one downside that I was feeling here, especially since I lost the light with that 14 mils, it's only 2.8, so not getting a lot of light in. I uh, I recently rented the uh, 35 and 23 1.4, and that extra bit of light was definitely worth it. I used to be like, oh yeah, the F2s are great, the focusing is fast, it's whatever, yeah, yeah. I used them things, and I was like, okay. Okay, I see the point. Then we were done with that. So now we're on to reception time. Yet again, same lighting. Flash on the camera, mag sphere. ISO is probably still at 800. Where is it? Oh, it's at a thousand this time because it was a little bit dark in there, but still, that's fine. Keeps everything lit enough, keeps it looking nice. Shooting with the 14, so I'm out there on the dance floor with them. If y'all caught that video I just did recently about uh, dancing shots at the reception now this is i need to make a video about this stuff the light painting it's a little bit of a different approach but for the most part it's about the same because i'm still using the 14 mil it's just my settings are very different at this point i'm doing direct flash so this is with the flash pointed directly at everybody which everyone always like oh it's going to be too harsh it doesn't look good but when you do light painting it works it freezes everything, it looks fine. Like if I didn't tell y'all that I was not using the Max Fair at this point, you may be like, oh wow.
I think it's always cool how you can see what direction I was like wobbling the camera in. So for the reception photos, I'm just looking for the best facial reactions and things like that. I tend to kind of overshoot for the dancing stuff, but then yeah, you get stuff like this. Um, Cause especially if you overshoot, there's moments that you like may not even catch, but you'll definitely get them in there. Shooting off the hip is a little weird sometimes too, as far as like composition. Um, like I'm not a huge fan of Dutch tilting and stuff, but you'll get a lot of tilted photos from my dancing reception photos just because of the way I shoot them. But yeah, so I shot this whole wedding by myself. I tend to shoot weddings by myself. Um, having a second is nice. Having an assistant is nice, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really not like the end of the world to shoot a wedding by yourself. You just have to know how to kind of run your day. And communication with the client, that's kind of the hugest part too. Like if you haven't set expectations with your couple, beforehand and kind of let them know how you're going to communicate you kind of failed already and that's why wedding days fall apart is because of that right there mainly no communication beforehand no expectation setting that will ruin a whole day uh i don't think i'm gonna keep any of these pictures of the dude smoking that was just random shots we got a pretty good amount of dancing stuff at this point cake cut should be coming on soon yep so here's cake cut uh, I didn't realize they weren't standing together really. This is the same lighting setup as before. Just a good old mag sphere. More dancing, such a party. Message retracted. <laughs> And so at this wedding, they didn't do a um, sparkler exit. They did luminaries, which are always the hardest to like manage. Mainly because what happens is since everyone's like drunk and partying, no one listens to you and it's so hard to actually like get it all together it's it's just such an ordeal Visual, visuals by pre what's up what's up what's my favorite lens um it is such a hard choice um i would say the lens that gets the most overall reaction out of me 
that I like absolutely have to have on me on a day of and if I don't have it I'm always sad um, it's probably the 56 1.4 um, that lens is it's like butter it's so good <laughs> like I can't get enough of it um, but I will say the f2 versions of the 23 and the 35 I like them a lot they're the ones I mainly use but they're definitely better for video um, they focus faster too but the 2314 and 3514 focus quick enough that you don't really need to like the focusing differences is not that bad especially on the xt3 so at some point i'm definitely going to upgrade to the um the 14 versions of the 23 and the 35 because doing weddings that extra light is definitely really awesome which is another reason why i like the 56 everybody taking shots so you see here i switched back to my typical way of lighting stuff which is the max fair on the top but when they were dancing yeah i'd go back to the light painting which is why everything is so dark because it's just a different way of shooting At this point, I think I have enough dancing photos. Okay, so here go the luminary. So I was not ready for this at all. Um, I didn't know we were doing them. They kind of told me the day of, like while I was there. So I didn't have a tripod or anything. So what I did was I handheld it. I'm at, I think 1600 ISO. Uh, yep, 1600 ISO. I got my shutter down as low as I could, but I mainly use the 56 yet again because it goes down to 1, 2. And I had my flash on there, but it was like barely flashing. You're talking like 1, 1 28th of a second for the flash. Just to like, just a little touch of light to help out. Because I also don't want to lose the feel of the luminaries. So they kissed here, but I wasn't a fan of that because this thing is blocking them. And then I was trying to get them to kiss while people started letting them off because that would have been dope, but they were too busy trying to hold their one. Um, and I was also trying to get people to hold some close to them because yet again, I need the lighting basically on them. So yeah, this was, it was disorganized, but um, I did get the money shot at some point. Um, and even a lot of these are good. They're a little grainy, but it's okay. I think you should have both versions, F2 and 1.4. Have both versions for Studio Street Kids. Yeah, because especially like the F2 versions, because they're so small and light, they're really nice for honestly most everything. The 23, 1.4 is like pretty big. It's almost as big as a 56. So like if I just want to carry around a camera, because that's what I have for my uh, my XT30. I use the 23 F2 on that. And so it's just nice and small. Um, the auto focusing is super quiet. So it's really cool for um, for like video stuff. You don't have to worry about, you know, in your video hearing the loud motors. Cause that's those other those one four versions. They're like, especially my fourteen. I hate using that one with continuous autofocus. Yeah, look, this is just a mess. But then I got a, uh, I got them to kiss one more time at one point. So like that's a keeper. It's sharp. And then this here, that's good. Here's another kiss wide. This one's good. I like the close-up ones better because you get all the like blown out from the different luminaries but you know you got to work with what you can but yeah like that dip doesn't work you'll have to photoshop that into something because people are just kind of standing around randomly <laughs> they got caught in the tree and everyone was like oh no <laughs> 
Always amazing work. Wish I could see your settings on these luminary shots. I can I can share. I was sharing them just a second ago. I'll, I'll put them in there. Hi John, any focusing tips for dance floor shots? Or like the shots you're actually just looking at? Um, yeah, so uh, focusing on this stuff here is like, you know, pray, pray to God and just like kind of do it. That's why I like kind of center focus stuff. It's easier to hit. Um, and the couple wasn't moving. So yet again, I was talking about that earlier, like directing your couple and communication and expectations is like probably honestly the number one thing of wedding photography. I'm actually at some point going to make a video, um, just about how wedding photography literally is like maybe 20% photography. The rest of it is all communication and talking to your couple and just all of that stuff, expectations. Um, but you know, on the Fuji, you can change your focus square. You can have it like really small or big for something like this. I would make it bigger, um, and just have it aimed on them a nice big square. And then, yeah, crank your ISO just a bit. I get kind of scared when I'm around 1600. I don't like being there. And then I opened up as far wide as I could. Um, so the settings on the luminaries. So I had a flash on my camera. Um, but it was down at like 1 one twenty eighth power. So you can see here it's barely flashing because I want to capture the light. I don't want to kill the mood of the photo. Um, I was at ISO 1600. On my 23, I was uh, the shutter speed was 100, which is risky because if people start moving, it's going to be blurry. But I knew for the most part, they weren't going to be moving that much and I would get at least one or two shots. Um, with the 23, I feel like I can go down to maybe 160th and not really get any handshake. So being at 100 wasn't so bad. I had it up there mainly so that people moving wouldn't be as bad. And then on the 56, so that was like these shots, I knew I was going to get more light in since it was 1-2. So yeah, opened it all the way up. I was only at 1250 on the ISO here because yet again, my aperture could go way bigger and the shutter was 1 100. And then that was basically the end of the night. Yep, that was it. Behind the scenes GoPro footage. Yeah, I got it. So I. I'm working on a behind the scene video now. Like I have the footage and I actually just finished the photos. So now I just had to finish the actual wedding itself or the video and the um, voiceover. I don't think I lost the footage yet because I was messing around with my Hackintosh. I got a new um, graphics card and it kind of killed my Hackintosh, which is where all my video stuff is. But hopefully it didn't like lose the stuff. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the next step. So after I go into photo mechanic, I five star everything That stuff is actually saved onto the raw files itself. So now I can jump into Lightroom and what I'll do is Typically, I'll go to attribute. I Want to find everything that's less than four stars Because typically I go through and I make a preview So I've already gone through and five star a couple of photos and edited them you want to make sure that you don't Select your edited photos because what will happen is when it reads the metadata from the file It's actually gonna remove The edit that you already have so I'll come in here and say anything that's for so I know it's nothing That's already selected and also anything that has no edits on it select everything and then metadata read metadata from files and then this is going to look at the file, look at its XMP data and all of those five stars that you added in photo mechanic will start coming over. Yeah. And then that way in Lightroom, I'll be like, cool, here's all of my five star stuff. I'm ready to start editing my photos because everything's like cold and nice. And if it needed to be rotated, I've rotated it already and it's just there and ready. So while it's doing that, I can close this out and open up a new one. So I think the next wedding I needed to do, I think it was Ashley and Anthony. Ashley and Anthony, which I, did I have a second? No, I did not have a second at this wedding either. So 
So that's going to open and load up. Switch it to capture time instead of file name. And then, yeah, that takes a moment to load. Lightroom's in the background doing its thing. Reading the XMP data does take a little bit of time, but it's pretty good. But yeah, I, uh, I did a couple behind the scene captures. The first one didn't work out as well as I wanted it to because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then I did another one which worked out and I have a video I'm making on that which I hope to have out in a couple of weeks. But wedding season is kicking my behind and also I kind of killed my Hackintosh. Um, so I have to figure out what I did <laughs> so I can get back in the system and get back to my stuff. Um, but I have a couple more weddings coming up, so I may go through them. And honestly, too, because like Hackintoshing is great, but you know, I get a new graphics card and put it in, and now it's this whole ordeal. I may switch over to doing my videos in like Premiere Pro or something, just keep it all PC since I like know the reliability of everything, but I like my Mac, I like my Final Cut. I have Final Cut for free because I used to work at Apple. Oh, right. Culling, Wedding 2, first one took me about an hour. Uh, I talked through a little bit of it, so it was more like 40 minutes probably, but. But yeah, so this wedding was like one of the ones that I had the the uh, 1.4 versions of the lenses because I had rented them because I scratched my 35, which is not showing any artifacts at all after being scratched, which is awesome. But yeah, the the 1.4 versions of the 23 and the 35 are nice. They're sharp. Obviously that extra light is like really awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm definitely probably gonna update at some point, especially now that my 35 is like scratched. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I probably should try and send it in to Fujifilm or something. Jack Daniels. But yeah, all this information of me like rotating the photos and stuff, all that carries over, which is why I go ahead and do it. So here's the groom getting ready. Yet again, 23. Oh, and you know what? I'm so glad I had the 1-4 virgins for this wedding because this room had no light in it. <laughs> but yeah, my 35 does all my close-ups. My 23 is doing all my wide shots. I usually set up the groom in a spot where the light will be the best. And just have him put his stuff on. Nothing serious. I don't make him stop and pose. Um, oops. With this one, his groomsmen were in the same room with them, so they were all like cracking jokes and stuff, which always helps for the occasional like smile like that. So obviously he's looking at somebody talking to him about something, but in this photo, you don't know. You think he's just looking away while he's doing stuff and he's kind of smiling. Maybe he's, oh yeah, I'm so happy I'm getting dressed. It works out like this, all that stuff. Someone said something stupid, you know? <laughs> so it always helps if you have cooperative groomsmen who won't take away from the moment but also kind of add to it by just chatting him up but not too much to take him away from the photos there's the ceremony area a couple of quick shots of that 
So this wedding was actually for um, a personal friend of mine, someone I went to high school with, her sister was getting married. So it was kind of cool. I always like when I get to be more a part of the wedding. Like I usually do insert myself into the wedding like I am a part of it, but when I actually know people, it's kind of cool. So it's rare. It doesn't happen often. But yeah, hopefully I'll I'll get some more weddings of folks that I I know or 6 degrees of separation or something. And then because I had some time, went ahead and captured the details. Anytime you can get that stuff out of the way is worth it. I don't know what I did to the settings on my, uh, the X-T3 that I had the 53 or the 35 on. I The settings were like not set to what I usually have them on. So the colors are all wonky, but yet again, that's just raw files. So... It doesn't affect the raw files. What we're looking at here are the um, JPEG previews. Oh. Quick rope shot before everyone gets dressed. And then I go back to the guys to finish up with them. Standard portrait stuff. Um, usually if I can find an area that I can get a little bit of depth through the background, I, I usually like that. Um, I don't like shooting with tellies. It's a little too much. I don't know, it's too much for me. I just need a little bit of separation, but I, I've seen a lot of people they'll use like, you know, they're 85 to shoot group portraits. And I don't know, I don't, I don't like having to stand so far away from my subjects because I feel like it makes you an outsider. And I don't want to be all day on the wedding day an outsider, you know what I mean? Like the guy standing 10 feet away from you with a camera. I, I don't want to be that. I want to be nice and close to you. I want you to know that I'm there. I want you to give me your reactions. Like the mother of the bride here looking at me, giving me a smile, like, cause I'm there in her face. I'm shooting with a 23, you know, like, I'm obviously pointing the camera at you. So this room only had one little window in it, the same as the grooms. But where he was, most of the light was falling. And where she is, which is like literally the other side of where he was, there was no light falling in there at all. So um, I had to use flash. I used off camera flash. I typically don't use off camera flash. But yet again, for any of those photographers who are like, I'm a natural light photographer, do do do. You, you need to learn off camera flash. You just, you need to learn it. You know, don't don't sit there and kid yourself. I prefer natural light. I'll go for natural light first over anything. But in this scenario, I had no other option. There was nowhere else to take her. She didn't really want to leave the room. The venue was pretty small. So like the groom is like literally across the hallway there. Um, and he, because it was like a smaller wedding, they did a lot of the details and stuff by themselves. So, you know, at any time, someone could have just, like, walked downstairs and be like, oh, let me set some tables. Oh, goodness, sorry, there's the bride. <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't take her anywhere. So, I set up a, kind of the same thing I do on camera. And that's the cool thing, in my opinion, is if you learn a lot of the flash stuff on your camera and how to get it to look nice on your camera and what modifiers work for you, when you do off camera, the only thing that changes is how far your flash is from the subject. So then you start thinking, okay, where's my flash? Where's the light gonna come from from my flash because of the modifier and how much power do I need? 
and that's pretty much it so i had a flash if this is the scene it was kind of like behind me a bit maybe like two feet behind me um fairly high up on a mag sphere um so just the flash on a stand with the mag sphere on it point it straight up i upped my iso i think yep i'm at 640 so kind of like the same thing i do with reception so all this stuff in the back the ambient light was being picked up from my iso and then the flash was hitting them to light them up a bit so they're nice and lit But yeah, if I don't have to use off-camera flash, I won't. <laughs> like, that's that's me. I don't want to use off-camera flash. I just the thing I don't like about off-camera flash is like, a lot of times it casts a lot of shadows. Like the way most people shoot with it at receptions, they'll just blast the light out, so you get these like big shadows across everything, and I'm not a fan of it. Um, so I typically try and keep my off-camera stuff just as flat as I can, kind of, not really flat, flat's not the best word for it, but you know, just a nice, soft light, enough to light the scene. And it's easier to kind of get it nice and soft and large with off-camera. So for all you natural light folks, Keep that in mind. You should learn some off-camera flash. You should grab yourself some um, some triggers or at least a flash that talks to itself. That's what I do with the uh, the Godox. I have a bunch of flashes that can talk to themselves. So, So the girls were just hanging out, people were hanging out. I had finished most of what I needed, so at this point now, I'm just taking some candids. Yet again, with the 56, so that no one really knows I'm there. I can get that ninja action on. Just kind of shoot them from a distance. It also has pretty decent separation on it when you're like not too far from people with the 56, so. Then we start the ceremony. Same thing again, I'm in the middle of the aisle. Uh-oh. Are these not five-starring? Were none of those? Uh, they weren't. How far back? Okay, from here. <laughs> but yeah, I like a nice center owl shot. So typically I'll stand in the middle and then just move out of the way while they come through. So shooting a wedding by yourself, you have to be prepared um, to get the groom's reaction. It's a lot easier obviously when you have a second because you can have someone dedicated sitting there just focusing on him. Oh yeah, when you have uh, flower girls and the ring bearer, always get low. Get on their same level. Don't stand and shoot down at them. So here's a couple of the groom before she comes out and then she comes out. I make sure I get a bunch of her while she's walking. But then I'm also turning real quick to get a couple of him. Keep in mind too, you can always grab photos 
reacts beforehand or afterhand, maybe of him reacting to other things, but if it's a good expression, no one's gonna know what he was looking at. So that's always the fun part of photos. If it looks good, no one's gonna be like, oh, he was looking at someone else. Unless he like cried the whole time she came down. And that's different than you obviously have to have some crying shots. Um, yeah, so Lightroom is still over here reading that XMP data. Um, it was a lot of photos, but it's still going, it's still doing its thing. So during the ceremony, oh yeah, I took one of those. During the ceremony, so when they're walking down, I typically have 23 and 35. I might shoot them walking down 35 if it's a longer aisle. Um, it depends But once they get to the front and the ceremony kind of starts I switch my tele camera to the 56 and then I'll take a couple of wide shots with the 23 and kind of midway through the ceremony I'll switch over to the The 14 because I like to use that as they walk out um, So here this is a burnizer or just a panel shot whatever you want to call it I'll typically take these sometimes when I'm doing the ceremony as well. So this is the first shot, or like I call it the safe shot. What's up, Ben? Um, so I take my safe shot, and then I take all the other shots that I can combine together. Because it makes for a really cool, nice, wide kind of ceremony shot. But it has a lot of depth in it too. And then yeah, ceremony is pretty straightforward. But once you've done a fair amount of them, you'll kind of know how they go. Um, obviously you just kind of hang out, wait for the kiss. They usually do vows, they usually do rings, and then the kiss happens. This was also another short one. So you see here, like I said, I had switched to my 14 at this point. So I get nice and close to them as they walk out. I switch my focusing to, um, continuous and zone and then I have the zone like a nice big square of like four other squares within there and then I just hold down my back button focusing and walk out with them nice and close now the reason I like to do the 14 is it still fills the frame it feels like they're really close um, but you can also see everyone in the back so if you have people standing or clapping or anything you can see all of that And then sometimes they get shots of everyone walking out. Damn. That groom looks familiar. That's uh, Anthony. This is actually, let, let me show you, let me give y'all a great example of what I was talking about with um, the couple walking out. So like this here, so this was with the 14, and so I'm nice and close to them, you can see everything, you can see the people throwing the seeds and stuff, so you got seeds everywhere, they're like super happy, you got the reaction of all the people behind them too, they're like, oh dang, they're throwing stuff, he's laughing, they're like, wow, I just threw it, and yeah, everyone's climbing, so it's really cool, whereas if I shot it like a tight telly, yeah, it'd be a cool shot on them and there'd be a bunch of separation in the background and stuff, but you don't really get the feeling of the whole ceremony and like everyone there. So I love shooting 14 on the way back. And there's our first kiss. I usually pretty much just high shutter that. So my 56, I back up enough so I can do full body high shutter and then just and get a whole bunch of that and I, I capture like the whole thing like I could probably make a gif out of the first kiss that's how many shots I take of it
because I just want to make sure like no matter what they do I have a good shot somewhere of their first kiss and even some like reactions and stuff in between so yet again like with the last wedding here's just some candidates everyone's hugging and having a fun time um, typically follow your your couple after they walk away because this typically always happens so now we go back to family shots I typically shoot my group shots like this with the 35. Keep them nice and tight, get a little bit of bokeh in there. Have you worked on last weekend's wedding or is this from the beginning? Yeah, this is backlog stuff. <laughs> I have stuff that I had to like call. I'm, oh, I just I just delivered a wedding. Let's, let's see how many weddings behind I am. Uh, where's my pick time at? There it is. Let's see. I am, so this is the one I'm calling right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weddings deep on stuff I need to edit. <laughs> so I called um, one, I'm calling this one now. I have a meeting with someone in a bit. I may call one more. I like to have at least two on deck. And then I'm gonna be adding at least another six weddings to this and three engagements and a bridal shoot. Yeah, so I got I got a lot going on. I got a lot going on. But yeah, this is the wedding here that I got GoPro footage for. So y'all keep a keep a watch on the YouTube channel for a full behind the scenes wedding day. It's gonna be awesome. It was a super solid day too. The photos came out really nice. The GoPro footage was awesome. I got the majority of the day. So, NC Comic Con, 8th through the 10th, uh, probably not. <laughs> I don't think I'm free. <laughs> Let me see. November 8th through the 10th. Uh, I might be able to come on the 8th at least to see what it's about. That'd be the only day though. The rest of it is just weddings. Weddings forever. So typically with these... um. These shots where you have like kids in the family, I stress to the family to like have the adults look at me. Um, so I let them know like, hey adults, look at me. Don't don't try to look at the kids and make sure they're looking because what happens is they'll be looking and then you're not looking and now the photo's ruined. I can grab a media badge. Um, I do have a wedding that meet that weekend but i don't think i need a second i need to look at my date i have oh, i have so much to do it's so much yo this is the first stream in a while that's like been solid i think it's that new graphics card it's actually it's working pretty well i have the graphics card crunching all the all the streaming stuff, which would make sense because it has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So earlier I was saying I didn't like shooting with an 85 for group shots. And then for this, I do exactly that. <laughs> but with this, the reason I did it is because the lights were on and I wanted to get that like bouquet. But you can tell I'm like mad far from them. So I'll usually have them do kind of cute poses, 
But what I like to do is I like to spring it on them. I don't like wait and be like, hey guys, pose like this. I just like three, two, one, do something. Um, it usually makes for great reactions and it also makes for um, just random stuff where people like are laughing at each other because someone did something like so random or they do nothing at all and everyone's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh no, everyone's blinking against each other. There it is. About to load up mine. Took me two weeks to finally get the two PC set up. So you don't need a 2080, yeah. I think, so I have a, I got a Radeon uh, 7, which was supposed to compete with the 2080, but it's just not as good. But I got it so that I could um, do a Hackintosh since um, Apple kind of disowned NVIDIA at this point, so they only work with AMD. Upstate Hudson Valley, what's up, Marlon? 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 Marlon. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, uh, for any of y'all who don't know, that's a kind of staple of me. I will butcher your name, I'm so sorry. I butcher everybody's name. I forget names and I butcher names. So these are solos of the bride, which I usually like to shoot on the 35. Every now and then I'll do it with a 56, but I don't know, it doesn't hit that sweet spot to me of like being close, but also a bit of separation from the background, which is what you're seeing here with the 35. Like you can tell that they're close to me. Whereas like when you shoot with a telly, you can tell that they're far away and I don't know, I just don't. I don't like the way that looks. Here's another Brenizer. Then we do some more couple portraits. I usually do these neck up poses, but they are kind of wonky, I'll admit. Necks all turned, you see up their nose. I don't know, I like them, <laughs> but yeah. Change locations, some more couple portraits. all 56 here goes some groom solos yet again with a 35 I really just I really like that closeness but also separation I don't feel so far from the subject and then whole bridal party real quick Some other random shots. Got their Ginyu Force in there. Oh, I thought I messed up this whole. I was like, everything's out of focus. What have I done? Marriage license signing. Do you use any JPEG simulations for photography? Uh, no. I've never even heard of that. Ference, Ference, what up? Flimsim? JPEG simulations? Do you, oh, you're talking about like the, um, the film simulations on the, yeah, so, so the stuff on the Fuji, I'm using that. Um, I don't use them for my edits. But I do have a certain way that I like to set up my um, my Fuji cameras. Oh, the 2314 is so, so I was at 14 and it just lets in so much light. Greetings from Germany, what's up?
At one point, I was thinking about moving out there. Yeah, the focus is good. 2314 is good. I was trying to get a job at uh, Ableton. And I would have had to move out to Berlin if I got the job, but I didn't get the job. <laughs> 35 F2, I freaking love it, awesome, yeah. 35 F2 is my my go-to. Now the 1.4 versions, I I it's kind of liking them. What I was saying earlier is I uh I actually rented the 23 1.4 and the 35 1.4 for this wedding and. They were uh, they were doing their job. Yeah, the focusing you can see it's a little slow, but when it catches that, it's so sharp, and it lets in so much light at one four. So this again is like the last wedding. I did the same thing except here I'm shooting with the twenty three, so I am standing a little bit further from them, but I usually follow them out, which is why you see the frame get so tight. Cause it's not like the 14 where I have like mad space, which I should have shot with the 14. So this wedding, I did try some off camera flash. So you see it back here. There's my Godox flash with the max fur on it. Um, yet again, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. Cause also you get like the flash in the background, but so I have a flash on my camera and then also off camera flash on the side. So from here you see it's coming from the left side is the off-camera flash. Yeah. And then I have on-camera flash as well, which is what I'm typically used to. And on top of it, since I had my, um, the 2314 this time, there was just like light for days. Honestly, I probably could have shot it without flash, but I wanted to, at least light them up a little bit. What was my ISO on these? 640? Yeah. Because yet again, I like to raise it a little bit, capture the ambient light in the back, and then flash to light them up. What's your take on the 56 versus the 50? I have not used the 50 yet. Uh, what's the uh, what's the aperture on the 50? Cause I'm sorry, that 50, 56 looks so good. Even the way it captures color is just like so, so good. So I would, I would be surprised honestly, if the, um, if the 50 could compare, but I actually haven't looked up much f2 yeah i mean it's probably gonna be the same as what it's like for me with the 23 14 versus the 23 f2 i love the 23 f2 i love the um the focusing how fast it is i love how quiet the focusing is but that extra light is always nice and it's just like yeah so the 56 probably still But the 50 is gonna be awesome. Uh, really, it comes down to like, what are you gonna be using stuff for? That's what I found. So like, I've gotten to the point where I've been using the 23 and 35 F2, and I've loved it this whole time. Um, but as a wedding photographer, since I find myself very often in situations of super low light, um, after renting the 2314 and 3514, at this point, I need to just go ahead and get them. Cause like I actually I actually need that like at this point I actually need it I'm in low light so often it's like every session I do I'm in low light so I may as well just get it whereas like if I shot portraits mainly um, or something other than that then the f2 versions I think are better especially if you're doing video so yeah, at some point I'm gonna upgrade both my 23 and my 35, which I have to upgrade my 35 now because I scratched it, <laughs> but it's not showing in any of the photos. So that's fine. Actually, y'all wanna y'all wanna pixel peep real quick? Oh, cool, so this is done now. 
to see five stars. I five starred, wow, 1100 photos. So that all came from Photo Mechanic. Let's pixel peek real quick. Um, what's the wedding I just did? I don't even remember their name. Caroline and Chase. So Ben, who's in the chat right now, he helped me out with this wedding. Got some of the second, second photographer shots in there. Um, so let's metadata. Let's look at my XT3 and the 35. <laughs> And see if we can notice. That's what I'm saying. Like, the lens is scratched, but I don't. I don't feel like I'm seeing. Uh oh. What I do? No! Scratching the front is fine, the back element is, yeah. Yeah, if you scratch the back element, you're done. You shoot wide all the time so you won't ever see it, true. Yeah, it's when I stop down, it's gonna be obvious, like, hello. And it's it's scratched up pretty bad. Like, it's, it's hurt. Did I stop down? I don't think I stopped down at all this whole day. Sometimes I stop down for the, um, Okay, so I stopped down for these groomsmen shots. I was at 3-2. But yeah, no. So for now, I'm good, I guess, but... Can't believe I scratched it. I'm so mad. Because now I can't even sell it to get the 35 1-4. But yeah, look at this. This is a 3514. That bouquet is so good. Man, I wish I had more big traditional weddings over here. What kind of weddings you end up doing? Fern. Fern and Ed. Fern. I'm just gonna call you Fern. Do you have like smaller weddings or I tend to I tend to get fairly big weddings. Like to me, this one I'm calling now is not totally a big quote unquote traditional wedding. It is still traditional, but comparative to some of the other stuff I've shot before, it's definitely not really big at all. So a couple of portraits, I snuck them away. So I'll typically do this, especially um, around the fall when, you know, there's still a little bit of light at reception time and I'll let them know this beforehand. So. What I like to do for my couples is I will let them have their cocktail hour. So typically what happens is you use the whole hour of cocktail hour shooting family and bridal and then the couple portraits, but I don't like to do that all the time. So what I'll do is I'll shoot them at first around cocktail hour, maybe for 15 to 20 minutes. And then after that, I let them go to their cocktail hour so they get to actually go and enjoy the cocktail hour. Um, but I let them know so we can have more photos and so we have a full gallery, you know, around when the food comes out, right around when the sun's going down. So like golden hour or blue hour, let's go back out for maybe five to 10 minutes, grab a couple more shots. Ah, When the, the right shot is blurry. But yeah, grab a couple more shots real quick, you know, right after they eat a little bit or right around when the food comes out. And if you've been talking to your couple, they understand you and what you do. What? Oh, squeeze, squeeze me, squeeze me. <laughs> Thanks for that sub. I was barely hearing that stuff. I was like, what is that noise? Oh, I have sub notifications. <laughs> but, um, yeah, take them out for five, 10 minutes. And if they understand it and they want the photos, they'll be down with it. They won't be like mad, like I'm trying to eat. 
so you know i let them know i'll say hey you know i'll just come tap your shoulder and see if you're down for more photos maybe it'll be nice if we can get some more or in certain cases i didn't really get enough photos of them so i straight up tell them like we have to do this if y'all want photos but um after that take them out for golden and blue hour for like 15 minutes max if even get a couple more shots so for this i actually switched to the 90 because i was shooting across that little lake thing here so all this is with the 90 mil i happen to have it on me i had it in my car um if i'm driving to a wedding i'll typically bring it just in case i don't like using it Yet again, like I said, I don't like being so far away from my subjects, so it's rare that I use the 90. But I used it here because it has stabilization and I wanted a little bit more bokeh. But see, even this at F2, it's just, it's not enough. If I would have broken out my 56, it would have been over. But not many full day shoots and they never do they never do preps oh yeah the preps start oh marlin two weddings awesome congrats on your two weddings the prep stuff is like half and half because i definitely have a lot of couples that don't want to do it i make it very pain free so that for them it's not like this whole thing of like why are you taking pictures of me getting ready and i think that helps Cause they gotta get ready anyway. So I'm just like, hey, while y'all get ready, can you please do it like this? Um, and they're usually cool with it. So this shot I did, yeah. That was my money shot right there. I love that. It's a little out of focus and stuff. And it's a little grainy. I was at like 1250 ISO. But it worked. I love my sideway walking shots. They're like my favorite. So then we go to speeches. I always do my speeches at 56. Get a nice tight shot of the speaker. And then look for facial expressions. Get some tight shots of the couple. Look for facial expressions. Wait for them to laugh or to kiss. And then again, you always wait for the hug. They may or may not come, but always stay focused on the couple for when that hug comes around. Try not to cull too many of these, but I do tend to like over cull most of the time. Cause yeah, especially for the speeches, like you just need a couple of good, like smiling, laughing reaction shots. And that's about it. Yeah, get a couple claps in there. This was kind of the hug. They didn't hug, but. Random question, what program do you use to get comments to show up on your live stream like that. Uh, it's been so long since I've worked on it. Um, ben probably knows. Ben is a Twitch streaming master. Uh, what am I using? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Streamlabs. Streamlabs.com, I think. No, is it Streamlabs? Oh yeah, I think it is Streamlabs. But yeah, that's how I get my stream stuff up. I'm using OBS for the stream. And then Streamlabs for everything else. And I could even, I could have a bot in there. I could do all kinds of stuff. Not OBS Streamlabs, just, just Streamlabs. So I'm using OBS 
within Streamlabs. I'm pretty sure it's Streamlabs.com. I've got OBS up and running. Yeah, look into Streamlabs. It's nice. It's free. I think it's yeah, it's free. I don't pay for it. You can pay for it if you want to, I think. But you can do all types of stuff like donations and you can have like notifications, which I need to actually update mine and make a match my brand. Oh, what was I shooting? So I'm used to shooting with the 14, but for some reason I started shooting with the 23. So when dancing first started, I shot some stuff with the 23. Oh yeah, it was the dancing game. That's why I did it with the 23. So have fun guys, edit more weddings in the morning. Oh yeah, it's, it's probably late there with you. See you later, Fern. Love your laugh and thanks for making it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for tuning in from Germany. Enjoy your night. So they didn't bring out the cake and all these cupcakes until it was mad late. So again, I did off camera flash, which is how I got this cool kind of moody lighting because the flash is over here on the left. You see it's all coming down this way. I didn't do this bridal shoot for her. I don't know who did it. That's a decent photo. That's kind of cool. I wish I would have done a bridal shoot, but I'm sure they weren't trying to pay all that money. Here goes some more details. All this was off camera flash. And the main reason I use off camera flash is so that I can get the light I want, but then also kind of control what area it's coming from. Because obviously if you're getting these close detail shots and stuff, but the flash is on your camera, then your flash is like mad close to the subject. Oh dang. Yo, the sky just opened up. It's raining so hard. Wow. Wow. I'm just chilling and it was like rain. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, what was I talking about? I can't even remember anymore. I got distracted. Oh yeah, the detail shot. So the, the flash is, you know, super close to what you were trying to photograph. And it just looks bad in a flat. You can tell that like you're aiming here, but the flash is way up here. So the flash like is not even hitting the subject that you want to shoot it's like over it and stuff um so off camera flash for detail shots is actually really awesome so we got some normal reception stuff i go back to my typical 14 mil flash on the top of my camera Straightforward. I'm there in the party shooting stuff. Looking for good and fun reactions. And this is always like the home stretch for me when I'm calling the reception. I'm always like, okay, okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost there. You know the girl in the black up uh, here? I was gonna say, you know everyone, bro. <laughs> How do you know so many people? I mean, I've been away for so long at this point. Oh, you're talking about her, I guess? I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah, she got a camera. I keep forgetting that I like moved away. And like have been gone forever, which is why I don't know anyone around here. <laughs> Oh, 
Um, this wedding was at some place. I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember any of these venues. It wasn't Muse at the Mills. Let me see if I can find the name of the venue. Morris Peaceland Farm. Since we got since we got Ben tuning in, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick second pause from from calling and let's edit let's edit some of Ben's photos from second shooting. Um, so he already knows, and I kind of said this before. I tend to not use a lot of second photographer shots. Um, so I'll just come in here and find some adjacent stuff. I can use but yeah this stuff is pretty solid pretty solid second shooter stuff so I edit typically pretty quick I'm sure y'all seen some of my videos on editing but oh you know what the problem is I don't have a black and white version of my black and white Reset for Nikon. I have to like go make that. <laughs> You're like, oh no. Oh no. The main shooter's looking at my stuff. Yeah, because I, I tend to use the second photographer shot a lot too for um a lot of my black and white photos. So yeah, I need to I need to make my Oh, I do have a Nikon black and white. I'm an idiot. Okay. I thought I didn't. It's been that long since I've shot with someone who shoots Nikon. It's a little soft. It'll probably look good after I export it though. Where'd that other one go? I forgot to switch the uh, lens. Yeah, it's a Nikon. Lens correction. This was nice, I like the framing. So I, I love when the framing's like different from mine. Cause then it gives me something more to work with. Yo, it is coming down. Yeah, thirds. Yeah, I'm a very symmetry, symmetry heavy. There's me, checking the time. groom reaction shots which is great framing check out this I like that solid black and white too. I forgot I even had a Nikon black and white. Some 
great candid stuff in here. <laughs> the fourth guy always had his face down. Oh yeah, these are good. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, this were these the shots through the bushes? Yeah, the bush again. <laughs> stuff oh nice you got the kids coming back this is nice this is good because since I'm usually focused on a couple this is the stuff I missed it's soft but good old black and white it's a fun photo I don't think no one's gonna be oh, the focus is off a little bit I didn't like the shots I took with this cattail stuff. Like, I kind of like this angle you had here better. I should have shot it differently. You know it's hard too because it's loading the smart previews. I can't totally tell if it's like off focus or not. I think it, it, it does look like it's a little soft. Let's export it and see what the final product looks like. Caroline and Chase. So my two part exporting, so I use the export and then it goes into alien skin. Yeah, it's a little soft, but that's fine. Put my sharpening preset on it. Oh, I see, the focus is on him. Wow, what lens was this? Oh yeah, one four. So actually it's not, it's not soft. The focus is on him and they're like just enough apart that at 1-4 it's like just enough to have her out of focus. This all looks great though. Was our timing off? I thought we sunk time. Oh no, no, that's right, because I did shots with her by herself first, okay. I was about to be like, what happened? <laughs> but even like these shots together, and that's what I usually look for in a second, like someone to give me some adjacent shots to what I'm already shooting. So I have these nice symmetry centered, symmetrical kind of shots. And then I have my second hidden stuff like this. These little rando candid close ups and stuff. iPad just got the big update. It's changed the way I edit photos. Are you still utilizing your iPad a lot? Yep, I still use it all the time. I got it, I got it right here, always close by, um, especially with this little keyboard on it. Basically, this is my laptop. Now, I only I only really edit on this when I'm away from my computer, though. So, my my computer is still my main thing. But when I travel to New York for a wedding, like I'm gonna be doing in three weeks or something, um, then that's when my iPad comes to play because I don't want to be able to not edit at all. So I'll use the iPad that way. 
<laughs> the symmetrical stuff. Yeah, it it definitely can get boring. I think because of focusing on the the um like focusing on the emotions and then doing stuff like this where it's just like super wild like stuff that's not as common because if i shot symmetrical and tight all the time yeah that would be lame it would just be totally boring but i'm just a fan of you know the focus is the people so if you have them centered focus that's the main thing you see but yeah, see, these match up pretty well. So, like, this is my shot here. I'm pretty sure he yeah, had 56. Obviously, it's center focused. You were just talking about that, John. <laughs> Oops, no. Let's see if they match up enough. Matching the colors is always the worst. It's always the absolute worst. I think Canon matches up a little bit easier with Fuji, but I'm not even sure. Let's let's finish culling this now. I'd be I'd be hitting my uh, rule of thirds every now and then. Every every now and then, I stick with that good old good old Wes Anderson. Good old Wes Anderson framing. Just told my friend to watch. I saw it in this wedding to come watch. <laughs> Did a family shot of them, but obviously this ugly exit sign. We moved outside. That should be fine after this white balance. Uh -huh. I thought that was a smile. I was like, what happened? <laughs> Good old cake cut. Same lighting on this one, flash on camera. Shot of the cake after it's cut. I do that every now and then. So that was all shot with my 35, the cake cut, just because the distance, I couldn't get any closer to the cake. I usually like to shoot it with the 23. Um, but that was kind of like the best option I had, which I don't mind. As long as I get to frame it up the way I like to, then I'm good to go. And yeah, at this point, this was nearly the end of the night. We end up doing a sparkler exit. This old man, everyone starts dancing up on him. <laughs> Caitlin register. I don't, what is a Paisley jumpsuit? Everyone keeps saying that. Can someone educate me? Look at that, look at that leg pose. He's in there. Then they had a little line go around. Such a fun crowd. Everyone had such a good time. He 
here. Is that you? Canon's colors are fire. Have you ever tried Canon cameras? I So I started with the 6D. The 6D was my bread and butter when I first started. I was on that thing for two and a half years. Um, and then I switched to Fuji from there. So yeah, I used to, I used to love my Canons. Every now and then I see some, you know, I see some full frame photos. And I see that camera separation on like a 35. And I'm always like, yeah. I do kind of miss it sometimes, you know. <laughs> well, no, it's for me. It's an overall, overall feeling. But yeah, these uh, Canon and Nikon trying to get up in a mirrorless game. Cause yeah, the size was a big factor for me. The price helped because Fujis were kind of cheaper. Um, and I love, I just love the quality and the electronic viewfinder is like game changing. Yeah, this is the end of the night. They start hitting off the slow songs. Caitlin's also a photographer too. Oh, nice. Awesome. Well, hopefully she didn't think I sucked at the wedding. <laughs> Couple close up 35s for the end of the night. Some nice dancing shots. I always be feeling like that when I'm at a wedding, there's another photographer. You're like, oh God. Hopefully they're not like, oh, this guy. So why is this guy shooting like this? <laughs> what is he doing? Shots are absolutely amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Ben shot with me last weekend. And he came, he helped me out with another shoot I did a, a while ago. Wow, 10 years, that is a long time. Rando bug just flying around. Yeah, this 3514 looking good. And this was me setting up for the sparkler exit. Best greets from Germany. Some more Germany folks. Hello. So this was the first time I was trying the whole flash behind the couple. I don't know if I like it. I mean, this is pretty dope. I wonder how much I can save this. I shot this with what, my 23? I mean, yeah, that's not, I, I do like all the smoke and stuff. I should have shot it with the 56. It probably would have been epic. I tried to have people hold stuff into the frame, but they held it too close to the couple. So it kind of backfired a little bit. Also, the flash wasn't like, you see, it's not going off the way I wanted it to. I think I was still fussing around with figuring out the flash. Oh, oh, I think this is the wife about done. Great timing. I'm almost done. Yeah, I mean, it works. Maybe I'll do it more often, but I'll do it with my 56. So typically and this is, if you're like a newer wedding photographer, this is what you should do. Like throughout your different sections of the wedding day, you need to figure out kind of like your approach to every section of the day and how you want to do it. And I know sometimes people think this feels like there's no creativity, but you really need to have like a set, like I do it this way every time. Your creativity in it will be maybe how you frame it or how the couple's coming down or stuff like that. 
So I haven't really nailed down how I like to do my sparkler exits just yet. Um, I think the last one I did was probably my favorite. Also use a grid, yeah, so it's not like blasting out so hard everywhere. Because that was just the, the flash pointed like direct. If backlight with Ocarina and Fast, I always do manual. I had it at manual, but I think it switched to TTL somehow. Because that, that's way too bright. It didn't need to be that bright. I thought you said your internet was slow. <laughs> What's up, Reggie? I actually, I got a new graphics card and I think that was probably half of it. And I watched a tutorial that talked about what your bit rate should be. Um, so I think I kind of understand it now because my upload speed is only 10 megabits a second. So bad. Um, okay, so that's all cold. So yeah, the last wedding I did that I really liked my sparkler exit was this one. So I shot this with the 56. Uh, I had a flash on my camera and it was set to like 1 1 28th. So this was the before. Just show y'all can kind of see the white balance and stuff. So yeah, and I had the 56 probably opened up all the way. Let's see, let's see. Uh, where's on? Yeah, 56. Yep, at one two. So I had it opened up all the way. I was at 1600 ISO, 160th of a second. So like, I like this look. Now add a flash behind it, maybe. That'd be cool. But I think I'm gonna start shooting my sparkler exit with the 56. I typically I used to walk down with the couple, but um, with like a 23. But I think I'm gonna start just standing at the end of the line with a 56 or something. I think that's the look. Also, yet again, the 56 has that 1.2, so I can open it all the way. So here we go again. Highlight all the photos, set it to four stars so I don't get any of the other ones I may have five starred already. No edits, select them all, metadata, sync metadata or no read metadata from files and that's going to pick up all the five stars from photo mechanic i'm afraid to guess who are drunk accidentally light me up yeah it's it's scary that's what i deal with every time i do it i'm always like okay hopefully i don't die today <laughs> it's the worst but all right, that's it for me for today. Thanks for hanging out while I was culling these weddings. Hope y'all learned a little bit about photo mechanic and my process. Um, hope I answered any questions you had as well. Don't forget to subscribe for more stuff. I do have a behind the scene video that I'm working on. It's coming out soon. Also, the dude Reggie who's in the chat right now, follow him as well. Um, his stuff is awesome. He also is a Fujifilm wedding photographer. And yeah. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. I'll catch y'all next time.